Well, happy Monday. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, so I, I'm filming this on Friday. I always film these videos a day ahead. So, you know, I film Wednesday's video on Tuesday. I film Monday's video on Friday. And uh, Fridays are a little crazy around here because my, my wife teaches violin lessons from the house in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. Normally she only teaches in the afternoon and evenings. So I get this guy Friday mornings and it makes it more difficult than normal to film the regular videos. So uh, we're on a wagon ride right now because that's that's what he d needs when he starts crying. So walking around the neighborhood, pulling little Joey along and uh, talking to you guys. Uh, later, we're gonna have a little interview with my wife. She, she'll go by Miss Alex, that's her, her teacher name when she teaches all of her kids. Uh, but she's, we're going to sit down with her, have a cup of coffee or hot cocoa or whatever it is. And uh, we're going to talk about instrument tuning because it's been about three weeks since I put out that tuning video. And uh, some of you might have, might have run into an issue with tuning that you can't tune any longer. Uh, because of the way the fine tuners work if you've you know screwed them all the way in to raise the pitch They're not gonna be able to go any far further in after a while. So we'll teach you how to fix that uh, She'll have some extra little tips on tuning since she's been doing this violin thing a lot longer than me uh, And then we're gonna talk about some minor repairs and stuff that you guys can make uh, we've, I know we've got a couple of broken strings out there, so I, I know I posted over in the, the homepage under the announcements. That's where you can go and you can find a couple of stores that can still help you out. But let's be real, we gotta, we gotta stay home, so we'll, we'll talk about how to actually replace that string right here through video. and. Hopefully walk you through it and make it easy to do. Some other little minor repairs we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about where the bridge should be on the violins, the cellos, violas, basses. Uh, so if the bridge has come crooked or knocked loose or fell out, we'll teach you how to get that back on there. Uh, and uh, I don't know what else might come up. I don't know. We're just gonna sit down and we're gonna talk have a little bit fun interview with Miss Alex talking about violin stuff For 20 minutes or so uh, If you want to play because I mean I know that's what orchestra is about right so check out some of those other videos We posted last couple weeks There's a lot of fun stuff to play on there uh if you're sixth grade, keep practicing the Beethoven violin concerto theme. We're gonna do something fun with that, probably in Wednesday's video. And uh, then fifth grade, be working on French folk song, because we're gonna do something with that in Thursday's video. Uh, so enjoy this little interview with Miss Alex, and we'll see you guys later. Have a good day. All right, so uh, here we are with Miss Alex. How are you today, Miss Alex? I'm good. She's good. Cool. So, like, who are you? What do you do in this, this violin world? So, I'm a Suzuki violin teacher. So, um, I kind of specialize in starting students really young, like as young as three years old. But I do teach older students as well. So. Uh. Do you, uh, do you play professionally around town at all, or are you just a teacher? I, I play, I've played in a couple orchestras too, not at the moment, and I do some subbing with chamber groups, and yeah. Cool, chamber groups. Like, like, like string quartets. 
planning oh, weddings like and events. Small groups, so yes. like not big orchestras, but yes. like just three to four, is that five people? Yep. Cool. Well, we have a, it's not really a broken violin here today, but it's, it's not going to play right. If I try to just pluck the strings, it's way out of tune. Mm -hmm. Now, I could use the fine tuners to fix that, but they can't twist anymore. They've twisted all the way in, and I don't know what to do. Not only that, but like the bridge... I don't I think maybe my dog bumped into it or something and the bridge shifted. Uh, and, and this thing keeps falling off. So down here, that the shoulder, not shoulder rest, chin rest keeps coming loose. So what are what are some things we can do to get this thing back to playing, right? Alright, first thing I'd want to deal with this with is the bridge, cause we don't want to leave that leaning for too long because the bridge will start to warp if you leave it leaning too long. That means it'll start to bend and then you can't really fix that at that point. And eventually you have to get a new bridge or it could break and we don't want that either. Like the warped tour vans? No. <laughs> oh. So how do we make sure, so how do we fix it before it gets warped? And how do we know if it is warped? Like. What if it's you mean if it's what if it's not fixable? What if I have to take it to the, the store? What's it look like? It'll look bent, so it won't just be it won't be straight up and down anymore. It won't be just leaning over like this, but you're actually gonna see a bend in the bridge. And you might actually start to see if you looked really closely, you'd start to see some cracks in the wood too. Okay. So since this one is flat, it's just crooked. See how this side over here is a little higher up than that side over there? And then we look at it this way, if it's coming perpendicular straight up. So it's not too bad this way, she says. It's a little crooked this way. Either way, we can fix both of them. How do we, how do we fix them? So for this, we're going to need a little bit of tape measure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like kind of grab onto it between the strings here. So I'm moving it straight. I don't wanna grab one side or the other cause then I can make it even more crooked. And so it's leaning towards the fingerboard a little bit. So I'm gonna push it this way and I'm gonna be like super gentle doing that. So you only wanna move it little bits at a time. I'm gonna check. And where are you moving it to? What's the proper position for it to be in? I'm moving it so that it'll eventually be straight up and down, so perpendicular to the violin. But where do the where do the feet go? Do they go like up this side? Of, is that pretty much close to where it needs to be? What if it's crooked way more? You mean like if it was like that? Yeah. Then you would have to turn it this way I would might grab it on either side here to turn it so that it's also perpendicular to the strings and should they be keeping the strings tight or do we want to loosen it to make it easier to move for um when it's only leaning a little bit like this I would keep the strings um as they are okay so if it's yeah. a little bit and you can just wiggle it back keep it in but if, yeah. if the bridge has completely fallen and come off, and then, then you, you would loosen it. the strings. You would loosen the strings um, a little bit. Um, have them tight enough that when you put the bridge back in, it'll stand up. But you're gonna want it leaning this way towards the tailpiece a little bit, because as you start to tighten the strings, it's gonna start leaning back this way. Ah. Uh. Straighten this out a little bit more. It looks like this side is leaning a little bit more. So I'm gonna do that. And it looks like the feet are lined up. I don't know. What do you think? Looks straight to me. Yeah, so you can you can compare it to the little indents on the F holes. 
Can you hold it real still so we can see right where they line up with? Mm -hmm. It's just barely above where the little line on the F is. And if you look down the strings this way, you should make sure that those the strings are going straight up the fingerboard. They're not going up at an angle. You gotta make sure everything's lined up straight up and down from there. So our bridge is in alignment, but our strings are still out of tune. What's, or do we do that as shoulder, the, this chin rest next? I think I'm gonna deal with this chin rest next because it's driving me crazy. Mm, okay. And if I want to tune the strings also, I'm going to be putting, if you want to put it on your shoulder, you want it to stay, so. It's true. Yeah. Uh, All right, so we've got a loose chin rest here. And. Now I used to use a thumbtack and I'd shove it in there and I'd scrape the wood underneath it and cause all kinds of damage. Is that a good idea? No. Oh, no. okay. Don't use a thumbtack. No. All right, but you don't have to have a little fancy chin rest tool for this. I have a binder clip here. So it's actually missing the little metal thing on the other side because I use that to tighten chin rests. So I'm gonna take this out. So the little metal thing on the binder clip. I used to get these things stuck on my nose when I was a kid. Yeah. Don't do that either. Okay, so I think it might work if we zoom in on this too. Yeah, let's let's zoom in. So I'm gonna hold the violin between my knees like this, and this is the side that's loose. I'm gonna put this under the binder clip in here. Will it fit? I don't know if this is gonna work. It's not. All right, in a perfect world, this will actually fit in there, but this chin rest doesn't work with this. So our binder clip up here was too big. We ended up finding a, a knitting needle, yarn needle, and some, some pointy objects from my toolbox. At school, I'll often use a paper clip and you see me get frustrated with it because the paper clip is too thin and it just bends. So now that we got some, some better things to use, let's, let's come back this way. All right, and for the record, um, this is the first time I've never had a, I've had a binder clip not work before, so it's- Because Higley kids are special. Okay, well I was gonna say, chances are your violin chin rest will probably work with a binder clip, but maybe not. If not, here are some other options for you. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna turn it a little bit. And then there's another hole on the other side of it. So I'm gonna do that again and turn it to the right. And if you notice that it's getting looser, then you're gonna turn it the other way. That's, that's always the best thing. A lot of people say righty tighty, lefty loosey. But if you're turning it one way and it's not doing what you want it to do, you've only got one other option. So just do that other thing. So you don't have to worry about righty tighties and lefties and loosies. All right. I don't think that's going anywhere right now. All right. Mm -hmm. It's an uncomfortable chin rest, but it's staying on. We've fixed our bridge. We've got our chin rest on, but we're still out of tune. Have and was there anything else, any other issues? I don't think so. I think, I think we're pretty good. All right, so yeah, we're still out of tune. And the real problem we have here is all of these fine tuners are tightened as much as they can go. So that makes it, if you have to make some really small changes in your strings, then you have to use the pegs and that's kind of a pain. So we're gonna loosen these fine tuners. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening all these fine tuners and that's gonna make this violin really out of tune. So then after that, we get to retune it. Just speed this up in the edit. I think you should play it at actual speed so they have to sit here and watch. Maybe. 
to loosen that one too much. Don't want that either. How do you know if it's too loose? It's, this one's like spinning, well, it's like crooked when I start to unscrew it, so I think that's starting to get to be too much. What if, happens if it comes all the way out? Can they completely fall out and explode? I mean, all you have to do is put it, screw it back in. Okay. I mean, so try not, not to do that. So it's not the end of the world, no. but don't, don't try to let yeah, it Yeah, try not to do it, but it's easily fixed. All right, so now, that is very out of tune. So we're gonna use the peg. Um, I'm gonna use my violin tuning app. So this is a violin tuning app that I just found a few days ago, and it's especially for the violin. Sorry, violas. Sorry, there, cellos. There might be one for Sorry, viola and cello, but yeah. So it has the violin strings on here, G, D, A, and E. So we'll start with the A string. I'm gonna tap on the A, cause that's the one we're tuning. It has ads, uh -huh. but that means you don't have to pay for it. You're too high. Oh, you're too low. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm gonna use the peg for this cause it's way out of tune. It says it's in tune. I'm gonna get the bow. All right, got that one in tune. Let's go to the D. Gonna play the D. Oh, and that's another thing that can happen when the strings are that out of tune. You turn, you tune one and it gets back in tune, but when you tune the next one, that changes the tension on the bridge. So that means you're probably gonna have to retune that string. So I'm gonna go back to the A. This one's only a little bit out of tune now, so I can use the fine tuner. A's back in tune. That'll probably change when I go to do the G. Let's do the D now. D's just a little bit too low now, so. Oh, here. Gotta wait for another ad. I'm gonna tune it with the A too. If you haven't learned how to tune using a perfect fit yet, then don't do that. All right, then we're gonna go to G. Way too low. Just so I can use the fine tuner. You can see that. All right, I'm gonna check the A again now. See if that stayed in tune. A got a little low. Let's check the D again. Let's check the G again. So another thing that happens when the strings are this out of tune is after you make them tighter, the bridge is gonna start leaning or it might start leaning again, which is exactly what happened. So I have to fix this bridge again like we did before. So I'm gonna hold on to either side. I'm gonna just slightly push it this way. And we're gonna check. All right, we got it. So, 
when I was watching you tune with those pegs, it looked like you had a totally different violin because the pegs were turning so easily and smoothly for you, and you were just going one-handed. I go, like, I hold it by the neck, and I try to and it two-hand it, and sometimes it still is just really hard to control. Flies. What if I'm a parent of a student, and I've never touched those pegs before, and I go to twist them, and what, what am I expecting? Because that, that looked way too easy. Yeah. So what I would do in this case is, since you have a child at home that knows how to play the violin, you have them hold the violin and play the string you're trying to tune and you put on the tuner and then you are in charge of moving the pegs you have both hands to work with so there you go and i need my tuner so should i hold it like our hold it on your shoulder okay just like you know how to do all right we'll go with a string and you go ahead and play the A string. All right, I'm gonna make that A string at two. It's very low now. So, and it says that on my app, so I'm gonna turn that peg, I'm gonna tighten it a little bit, little by little, as best as you can do, a little by little. And now it's in two. And see, I can hold on with my right hand to the scroll, and that kind of holds it more stable while I turn the peg. What happens if as soon as you let go of the peg, it spins out of control and unwinds? You're going to have to retune it again, and that's the next thing I was going to say, is as you're tuning it, I'm going to make it out of tune again. Go ahead and play. All right. As I'm turning it little by little, I'm also pushing the peg in towards the scroll and that helps it stick. All right. And then should we talk about what happens if, even if it doesn't stick? So even after you've pushed it into the peg box pretty good, mm -hmm. it still doesn't stick? Yeah. Yeah, what happens then? So in that case, if you've tried pushing it as hard as you can, you've done it over and over and it still won't stay. You need something that's going to help it stick. And if you went to a violin shop, they put something like peg drops or peg compound to help the peg stick. But like chapstick for your pegs. Kind of. But Maybe not at all. Yeah. It's like WD-40 for your pegs. No, that's the opposite. It's like glue for your pegs. Yeah. But do not use glue, that's a terrible idea. Okay, so instead what you can use is a pencil. So the graphite from the pencil should be enough to help it stick. So what you do, you'll do is if the peg's loose, you'll pull it out a little bit and take your pencil and you'll just kind of scribble a little bit on the peg and then And there it is. Cool. All right. So, so this one's in tune, but it needs it. It kind of needs to go to the doctor anyway and get a string transplant because none of these strings are really broken, but they have gone false and they're not very good anymore. So we're gonna switch them out with a brand new set of strings. So we'll. We'll show you how to switch a string out. We're only going to do one for now. We'll do the rest later, but uh, we'll pick one. So, so what does it mean? Because some kids have them when they're, they're the broken strings. Those strings clearly need to be replaced. They can't be tuned up or anything. What does it mean when they're false? Why are we, why are we switching these out other than for the sake of the video? That means they're not playing the note they're supposed to play anymore. So let me get my bow here. So this is supposed to play an A, but as I, it's not happening as much with the A. Let me play the other string so I can demonstrate. It's happening with the G. That did not sound like a G. So it, it starts out playing like, 
but then the note gets higher, it gets sharper. So that's what happens when the string, string go, goes false. Is it plays the wrong note, and no matter how much you tune it, it's still going to be playing the wrong note. Uh, it's like it's trying, but it just can't anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. giving up. Yep, yep. Strings come in these little baggies. Which one are we going to do? We're going to do the A string. Yeah. Alright, how do I know when I pull... Also, how do I open this baggie? I'm going to use those sharp tools from my garage. We're getting there. Alright, there's four of them here. There's different colors. Are they color-coded or what? Um, yes, I think they are. I think the, the one with the black winding is the A string, but let's see what's on here. Yes, it says A. You look at the package on your strings, it will say which color is which. Follow those instructions. Yes. So we're switching the black one. You can also tell if you just look at them, they're like the E strings, your thinnest one, G strings, the thickest, but instructions. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna take the A string off. And I also wanna say, you probably, in this situation, you probably won't be changing all of your strings. The only reason why you change a string is if it's broken. But if for some reason you have to replace all the strings, which you probably won't replace all of the strings at the same time. So what I'm saying is don't take all of the strings off at once because then there's nothing to hold up the bridge. So, oh, that's right, because remember that bridge isn't glued on or anything. It's just held on by the pressure of the strings. Yep, so we get to take this peg and completely loosen the A string. My A string. So the A string's that top peg. Yep. But really, if you got the broken string, just follow it up and you, you'll know which peg it goes on. So there's a little ball at one end and not a ball at the other end. So the ball end goes on the tailpiece. So where? Yep. This little, you can see the string underneath the winding here. That's where it's gonna go. And a lot of these fine tuners are different. Yours might look slightly different than this one, but you've got four fine tuners on there. If one of your strings is broken, just make it look like the other three. Try that again. There we go. All right, so now this is the really fun part. get to slide the end of the string into this little hole here and then I like you have to be very careful when you start turning this so that the string doesn't get all tangled up in the peg box do you want any kind of overlap at all no well the like it'll be like right next to each other but no you don't want them overlapping oh yeah so if, if you've t put a string on a guitar before, this is similar but slightly different than the guitar because the guitar you overlap the first time and it helps hold it all together. On these violins, since the pegs are working the way they work, they don't need to wrap over. They're just gonna wrap one after another. Nothing crosses over each other. And then, once you've got it somewhat tightened, you go back to your tuning app. And then this string is probably going to need some time to stretch out. So you're gonna be tuning a lot after you put the new string on because it needs time to break in and stretch out. Like a new pair of shoes. Yep. Cool. Well, our baby is waking up. And yeah, uh, if you see him here, he hadn't napped all day today. Uh, and then we put him in the car seat and he finally fell asleep. Now he's waking up. So we should probably get this interview wrapped up. Yeah. 
Well, there it is. Hopefully all of your instruments are in playable condition again now and back in tune. Uh, where, where can where can these guys find more information about Suzuki and what it is that you do? Um, you will go to suzukiassociation.org and that is the Suzuki Association of the Americas website. And yeah, you can just look through there. There's a ton of information about the Suzuki method in general. And if you want to find Suzuki teachers in the area, go to um, find a Suzuki teacher. And there could be a, there's a place where you can plug in your zip code and how far you want to go for a teacher. And you can look for a Suzuki teacher near you. Is it violin only, or can my viola, cello, and bass players out there find a Suzuki teacher? You can. There's viola, cello, bass, there's piano. There's a bunch of different instruments now. I play trumpet. Can I play Suzuki trumpet? You can. Does it mean That's I... That's a new thing. Do I get to play a little teeny tiny trumpet? I don't know. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> this guy's ready to go inside, so let's... There, there he goes. See ya. You didn't think I wasn't going to show you videos of a baby going down hills in a wagon, did ya? You ready, baby? Hold on. Here we go. Uh